Okay. All right, thank you. Good morning, I'm Stephen Datz, Chair of the Awards Committee. I'd like to call the October 6, 2022 awards meeting to order. We have a physical quorum represented by Mark Stoltz, serving as a delegate for Laura Sheppes. Russell Cappy is representing Joe Orfano. We have Hai Vu and myself. Uh, we also have Todd Skinner representing Ricky Erickson joining us online. The Office of General Counsel is represented by Rebecca Levy. Budget is represented by Stephanie Neely. And before we begin reviewing today's agenda, I'll note that there isn't anyone physically present for public comment. Eileen, did you receive any public comment via email? No, sir. All right, let the record show we did not receive any public comment. I'll pause for a moment to allow callers joining us online to unmute and speak up. <clears throat> Hearing no comments, we'll proceed with today's regular agenda. We have items one through eight that have been reviewed by procurement and budget. These items are now ready to be reviewed by the awards committee, beginning with item one, representing the minutes from September 22nd, 2022 awards committee meeting. Are there any comments or corrections to be discussed? All right, may I get a motion to approve award item one? So move, Mark Stoltz. In a second? I have a second. I think I heard Russell first. Oh. So, <laughs> we have a motion from, from Mark Stoltz, a second from Russell Caffey. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Minutes are approved as presented. I'll pass it over to Jenny McCollum, our Chief Procurement Officer, to present each of the remaining items before I ask for a motion, beginning with item two. You through the chair. Award number two is an invitation for bid. Jenny, Amory? you might be muted there. No. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, Jenny. I can hear you, too. I can, too. Room can't hear us? Still can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, they have okay. issues too. Hey, Stephen, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Ted. Thank. But I don't think they can hear us. I I, I think there must be an issue Hello. with the audio in the room. Yeah. I'll send them a note. Hold on. Right now, it's showing that they're muted in the bid room. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to talk to IT offline for just a sec. Okay. We can hear you. You can hear us? No. Yes. You can hear us now? Okay, yes. everyone on the call could hear me, but you guys, so perfect. perfect. <laughs> All right, All right well, we'll start over. Okay, so through the chair, award number two is an invitation for bid. This is for Greenland Energy Center LED fixtures installation services. Um, this is for construction services and the contractor will install JEA supplied fixtures and equipment as well as modify electrical circuits. Miller Electric Company uh, is the recommended awardee in the amount of $123,462.30. This should be completed in June of 2023. Um, we only received two bids. Uh, we did uh, quite a bit of feedback with the vendors. We extended the the bid due date one week. We also extended the project completion date to the end of June to give them, you know, more time. Uh, we still only received two bids, so we went forward and opened those two bids. Um, but when we're looking at the amount of the bid versus our budget, we are about 27% lower. Um, and then just a note that the there was a separate bid that we. Um, handled to purchase the lighting, uh, which is going to be about 56, 57,000. 
And then lastly, the bid for this is considered formal um, based off of Florida statutes because it's electrical work. So anything over 75,000 we bring to the awards committee. Any comments or questions? All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Oh, sorry, I, I do have a question. What, what's the award amount for this year? Uh, online, it's zero, is that correct? If you scroll back up a little bit, um, I mean, but yeah. Uh, that's a good catch. Hi, probably needs to be updated. This was supposed to go before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, yeah. Before yeah. we canceled awards last week. So let's make sure we look at all of that. That. Yeah. There's a couple of like that. So yeah, I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We'll we'll make a note of that on each of these. Um, but budget has approved all, so. We'll just make the adjustments as needed since we're in the new fiscal year. Any other questions or comments? All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, a motion to approve award two with amendments. I vote so moved. I'll second. All right, we have a motion from Hai Vu, a second from Todd Skinner. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion is adopted. I'll pass it back over to Jenny to present award item three. Thank you. Through the chair, award number three is, was an invitation to negotiate. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about this one, and there's lots of pieces and parts to this. Um, it's a big award, so I want to make sure you guys understand all of this. But this is for the equipment, software, and services for our water advanced metering infrastructure, which we refer to as AMI, and then our field, our field area network, which we're going to refer to as FAN, and then the head and systems, which is the AGS. So the AMI uh, FAN consists of a system compatible of delivering, registering, um, and interval reads, as well as alarms and events uh, from 100% of the water customer meters. Uh, this includes the necessary in network infrastructure, um, installation, and water meter endpoints. Uh, the AGS will receive the register and the interval reads to attain functionality and monitor, monitor the network health, along with integration services um, to tie the AGS to C2M. So Badger Meter Inc. is our recommended awardee in the amount of $56,364,950.70. This is a 10-year award with two one-year optional renewals and a little bit of history. So um, we originally solicited a request for proposal and informally um, awarded a six month small scale proof of concept to uh, the open market. We received six uh, bids and they were scored and we qualified three of them. Um, those three were uh, Badger Meter, Census USA and Landis and Gear. Uh, the point of con the the point the proof of concept was completed in July of 2022, and all three of those um, respondents were qualified to participate in the larger scale ITN, which is what you're approving today. Uh, the responses were evaluated on price, use case, solution design, and architecture design approach, work plan, ability to meet project requirements, company experience. And uh, we sh ended up shortlisting two of the three. So we shortlisted Badger and Census USA, and we asked for best and final offers. Uh, the best and final offer pricing for Badger was reduced by about 3.5%, which is um, 2.1 million, a little over 2.1 million. Um, the service unit uh, pricing is gonna be fixed for the 10 years, and the endpoint hardware shall be fixed for four years. So any price increases thereafter are going to be tied to CPI for annual adjustments. Um, just some benefits here um, for the customer's increased ability to detect and prevent water theft, um, improved ability to detect water leaks, 
um, better accountability for customers to manage consumption, uh, increase bill accuracy, and reduce uh, reliability on manual reads. Uh, this also includes a 20-year warranty on the endpoints and service level agreement of 99% network uptime. The Badger solution received the highest evaluated scores primarily due to um, no requirement for JEA to install, operate, or maintain network devices, uh, the use of the cellular LTE communication strategy, the maturity of the endpoints and customer portal, and then the high performance of the technical staff and interface with JEA IT personnel and systems. Um, the implementation period for this award is expected to be about um, 48 months. The first four to nine will be dedicated to the initial development uh, or the yeah, deployment, excuse me, and then also um, encompassing pro the project planning system, architecture design, configuration, uh, network stand up, and it'll have a limited deployment of meters. Uh, the remaining uh, 39 to 44 months will be dedicated to the full deployment. Uh, expected to deliver endpoints necessary for the installation of the meters and resolve any SAN or HES issue, issues discovered, you know, during this time. Uh, and then I'll note that JA is planning to publish a separate solicitation for the installation of the endpoints immediately following approval of this award. So there's one more award you guys will see. A lot of information. Um, I think I'll pause there and ask if you guys have any questions, comments, and then see if the business would like to add any more information that I may have left out. All right, the plastics are on. <laughs> so. Hi, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Oh, I was just, I was just about to leave the meeting. I thought that was me, Sheila. Sorry. Thank you for saying that. A uh, price company, um, based on it looks like to me, you know, with design approach and um, the other categories that this that, that Badger scored much higher on, um, and what while you do take cost into consideration, the difference between the two points wise was only six points out of a hundred. So six points for twelve million dollars. Is that or the team is the team comfortable with that evaluation? So we missed some of that, but I think yeah, I, I think uh, we've got the the gist the on the back. End. It on the top right on the middle right. I don't think we can hear them. Hold on, we can't hear Can you yet. Guys? Sorry, Jenny. still on on the left screen. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, in the middle. Um, it's the same issue that that we had before. I mean, you see that? Oh, oh. It's right there. It's... Hold on, Jenny. Can, I'm really good at reading lips, Jenny. Does not. <laughs> I can hear you guys. I'll just can translate you hear me? what she's saying. It's okay. Good. Yeah. We're good to go. Okay. So the point differential. I'm totally, totally good. I'm yeah. not good at reading lips at all. Yeah. It's not doing it. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, we're still having difficulty hearing you. And Glenn, if you're speaking, right you're now. Right. Okay. There. You know what it is? I'm connected here through my laptop as well. My volume control is controlling the volume in the room. I turned it down so there wasn't any feedback. And okay. so I don't know how that happened, but me connecting through my laptop gives me control of the audio. So. Okay. 
I would you restate your question, please? Yes. Um, so I'm sure the team has evaluated this, but from a third party perspective, um, while you take cost into consideration in the scoring, I think there's about a $12 million difference between Badger and Census, and that equates to a six point difference in your evaluation. So I just want to make sure that um, the design approach and the other categories sound like Badger is a much better, has a much better uh, proposal, but want to make sure that it's worth the $12 million. Because in the end, $12 million difference here is worth only six points <clears throat> out of your 100 points evaluation. And is the team comfortable with with that assessment. Sure, I, I can provide some input on that. I, and we feel that it is at this moment. I mean, the fact that you actually have um, the ability to be able to re receive these reads without actually having a network present at all and the maintenance involved with that from, from here all, all the way up to the time that you actually have this is has quite a bit of value to that. In addition to this, Badger has that offers significant type of advantages related to pressure sensors, valving, um, drive-by technology, and a lot of the other things that are niceties that, that we would want to have. Some of these things are redundant, and we would expect as they come, come through, and, and Badger really outperformed when it came to that. The customer portal piece is just another added feature that we would not necessarily have to build, we could adopt into, and to be able to offer stuff to our customers most immediately. Um, they got a great reputation in the field, uh, they're working with us related to the supply chain issues and making sure we're getting the things we need. And if flat out, they're working with us and we're not really seeing that with all the other customers out there related to their to their equipment. So if, if you're asking my opinion, yes, we are getting our value from it. Tom, did you run numbers, though, on the savings associated with not having to maintain equipment uh, at our locations for this? I mean, I can, I can imagine that that what you're saying is the value is there, but I just wondered if you had estimates that would show more clearly that that net back. We, we did run some numbers there. That was mostly done on the TS side of the house up through Kim Trailer's team through telecom and understanding what it needs to do to install that and maintain it from their perspective. And if that's the savings there, I can provide that information if need be, though, but I don't have it readily available at this moment. No, it's okay. It's just good to know that it's there and that there's that offset that, that High is looking for. Thank you, Tom. So uh, I'm hearing is the the benefit from Badger is worth a lot more than the the cost difference. It's the bottom line. Yes, that that's correct, High. Um, and we are we are planning for for the future. And we think Badger Solution positions us best uh, for the future. Glenn Ellison, I think, was trying to speak um, after Tom, but was muted. Um, Glenn, did you have something additional to add? I mean, something additional to contribute? Uh, yeah, just that obviously uh, uh, price was the largest factor uh, in the assessment of this. And uh, along with, as was mentioned, the use cases, the solution design, design approach, and the ability to meet requirements in the customer, exp uh, the company experience. So all of those were were factored in, and and obviously it's it's apparent that uh, the um, the higher cost um, proposed by. Oops. We lost you, Glenn. Glenn, we lost the last maybe 30 seconds of your comment. Would you repeat it, please? Yeah, just that the higher costs were overcome by the solution design and the design approach advantages of the Badger solution. You know, as, as was mentioned, the use of uh, extensive use of, of uh, by the census solution of our cellular towers, the needed power supply, fiber connections. And additional third party sites that were that were not specified in the bid uh, does open JEA up to to much uh, cost risk and reliability risk. And so we took all of those into account 
and evaluated the bids and came up with Badger as the optimum solution for us. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, uh, Sheila and Tom. Uh, um, You're I was comfortable before. I'm much more comfortable <laughs> now. Thank you. You're persuaded. <laughs> and just, uh, one other comment, and Glenn and Tommy can probably speak to this, but can you contrast the, the network availability, a difference between what we currently have versus where we're going with the 99% network uh, uptime? Yeah, hey, Glenn, can you kind of give a brief overview of the USCPs, the end of life pieces there, and how we kind of um, are modeling and what we're doing on the electric side? Yeah, as most of you know, we've been doing automated meter reading for 20 years, both electric and water. And we're at a point now to where on the water system, the um, radio module is obsolete and can no longer be purchased. Uh, the head end system or software is also obsolete and we're facing an end of service of that USC in 2026. With the failure of the endpoints and, and associated meters and then the obsolescence of the radio device, we're, we're facing excessive numbers of manual reads, which has uh, several uh, disadvantages uh, to us, billing errors and the inability to determine the correct consumption of our customers, uh, resulting in decreased customer satisfaction. And then the increase in the number of meter readers that we've had to hire uh, which uh, was 17 five years ago and is over 50 now. Uh, but what we're heading to is uh, from a system that about 75% of the water meters in the electric service territory we're getting a daily read from. We're going to a system of 100% of water meters. And this is from Yuli to Volano and everything in between every water meter in our system we're going to be getting not only daily reads but interval reads at the hour or even 15 minute range if we so desire so that we can not only obviously bill our customers we can provide um, insight into their specific consumption not only on a daily basis but during times of the day this now makes leak detection possible because when we see usage on a water meter every hour of the day for say for instance three consecutive days we know that that's a leak and it's not it's not true consumption by the customer in their usage so we're going from a system of a daily read 75 percent of the meters just within duval county to hourly reads for every meter in our um, water service territory. So we think we have great advantages and a great future ahead of us with this system. That's an excellent point, Glenn. Um, and for the folks in the room, 110,000 of our endpoints have failed a third. Well, now a fourth because we're over 400,000 uh, water customers, but a, a sizable percentage of our endpoints have failed and we've never provided um, the the level of service uh, uniformly uh, to all of our customers. Um, unless the customer resided in Duval County, they didn't have access um, to leak detection or um, you know daily at least at a minimum daily reads. So this is a huge leap forward for us in in the service delivery. And then Glenn mentioned uh, the 50 meter readers. Um, it, it, that's a sizable group of people. There's a, you know, a, equipment requirements, trucks, everything that goes along with it. Um, and we know that the other benefit to this solution is the drive-by capability. So at some point in the future, the endpoints will fail. That's just the, the way um, this will work, but we won't have to deploy a battalion, an army of, of meter readers to go and capture reads if the endpoint isn't communicating. Um, we have the capability now um, to, to drive by and gather the reads. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. And, um, 
I just think from a, from a service offering, having the ability to include the leak detection encompasses so many other benefits that are underlying and um, the, the work that went into this over the last several months is you know very obvious that uh, you guys did your due diligence and um, I'm really excited about this one. So good, good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for to Tom, um, Glenn, and all of the folks involved. Um, this was this was quite a heavy lift, and they've done a fantastic job. And Sheila, to your point, excited about the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and thanks uh, to Kim Trailer as well. I should have mentioned her. Um, she provided a significant amount of support. Really appreciate it. I have one quick question. Uh, does this contract include the the data rates for the reads? Is it is it included in the the cost here, or would that be a separate? Yes, this includes the the pricing of essentially the data on on a monthly uh, basis for each endpoint. Thank you. Okay, good discussion. Echo what Sheila said. Really appreciate all the hard work on this. I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Jenny. Motion to approve award three with amendment to include the award amount for the remainder of this fiscal year. Hi, we so moved. And second. Second, Mark Stoltz. We have a motion from Hi Vu, a second from Mark Stoltz. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed, the motion is adopted. I'll pass it back to Jenny to present award item four. Thank you, through the chair. Award number four is a request for qualification. Um, this is for uh, fire resistant clothing for our field employees. There are four recommended awardees. Uh, we've got Boot Barn Inc., uh, Simmons & Co. Inc., Kim J. Uh, Spursel, Inc. and um, Tyndale Enterprise Inc. all in the amount of $307,500. This is a three-year um, kind of qualified list, if you will, with two optional renewals. Uh, we received four qualification packages. Uh, we evaluated them on pass-fail basis, um, being able to, and then also being able to provide the services required by JEA. There's a whole host of kind of what they offer um, for each of them. And we are setting this up very similar to the way that we handle um, the boots and, um, and for the field employees where they can choose where they want to go and it'll be a voucher system, um, very similar to, to the way that we handle those. So uh, we just wanna give them just market volatility, supply chain challenges, ease of doing business, wanted to give them a way um, to, to have places they could select from based off of their choice. It's worked well on the boot side, uh, so we followed suit on this. Any questions or comments? All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, may I get a motion to approve award item four? So moved. We have a I'll motion. Russell Caffey, a second from Todd Skinner. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is adopted. I'll pass it back to Jenny to present award item five. Thank you. Through the chair, award number five is a contract renewal. This is for supplemental vegetation management services for JEA. The recommended awardee is the Davy Tree uh, company in the amount of $872,466.70. This will take us through January of 2024. Um, part of this, uh, part of the funds that you're seeing is, is for the renewal, um, but there's also additional funds in this award that were needed to replace 
trees ink crews with three to five more daily crews. So we're actually going to beef up the daily crews a little bit more here. Um, and then we are planning to, to process a new solicitation for the primary vegetation management contract, which is um, something that Trees Inc. currently holds. Um, and we will, we still have one renewal left on the supplemental one. So um, kind of keeping that in our back pocket in case we still need to utilize that um, based off of the, the bid that we're going to be performing in FY23. I'll just note the pricing was fixed for the first year, so it can adjust um, to CPI with these renewals. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments? All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Jenny. May I get a motion to approve award item five? I vote so moved. And second? Second. We have a motion from Haibu, a second from Russell Caffey. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the motion is adopted. I'll pass it back to Jenny to present award item six. Thank you, through the chair. Award number six is a contract increase. This is a construction management at risk contract and it's for Nassau Water Reclamation Facility and for the upgrade projects there. The Haskell Company is our recommended awardee, and the contract increase is $85,235,958. Uh, we are expecting the projects to be completed February of 2025. A little background, you guys saw this back in December of 2020. It was just the pre-construction kind of services amount. Um, in the 420,000 range. We also came back with an increase in June of 2022 for long lead time equipment and early site work um, and about the amount of, a, of about 20 million. This award request is um, for the guaranteed maximum price based on 75% design documents. The negotiated GMP is approximately 2% below the JA estimate for this work. Um, once we reach 100% design, a true up will be completed to finalize the construction costs. Um, it's expected that most of the true up will be covered by the included contingency and allowance items that we have in this GMP. Any questions, comments? All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you. May I get a motion to approve award item six? So moved, Mark Stoltz. And a second? Haibu, second. We have a motion from Mark Stoltz, a second from Haibu. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is adopted. I'll pass it over to Jenny to present award item seven. Thank you through the chair. Award number seven is a contract increase. This is for special waste hauling services for non-hazard waste and hazard waste at our JEA facilities and field operations. Uh, we've got two uh, recommended awardees, um, U.S. Ecology in the amount of 125,000 and Holes Environmental Services, Inc. in the amount of 100,000. You can see from the table, we we in the award and near the backup, it shows all the different times we've come to the awards committee. And we also put a, a table kind of spelling out um, what the new not to exceeds are. Uh, but we started with three. We still have three companies. Um, but as we were working through um, some challenges that we were having, it basically boiled down to um, just increase in costs in the market. And so we have allowed them to adjust their um, base pricing on fuel and transportation indexes um, where we negotiated what that, what that would look like. Um, in doing so, we've already seen, you know, complete turnaround in the response times. Um, and then uh, we have also locked in those 
those rates for the renewal. So you'll see the renewal on here as well. And I'm gonna pause there, see if you guys have any questions or comments. So there's a ratification to Cliff Burry too. Yeah. I don't, uh, Joe, I don't think that's a ratification to Cliff Berry. I think we, why don't you guys jump in on that? There's not a, the not only, one. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry, there's not one for Cliff Berry. We're just listing them as being one of the contract holders from the original award. We've given them an increase already. If you look at previous increases, so their new not to exceed amount you know, is in that table in the background. So this request is just for the two that we talked well, about. In the recommended action, it says, and then also in the body, it says a uh, uh, ratification to Cliff Berry. If you scroll down to the final paragraph, I mean, right there, yeah, the ratification to holes, I'm sorry, to holes, environmental services. I see it, yes. So there's a, a I think it was David that was speaking earlier, right? Um, about 32,000 of that has already been paid in services before we could get to the awards committee. This is David, that's correct. Okay, and that's just the whole. Okay. David, let's, um, if you don't mind, put that 32,000 um, next to where it says ratification. And we say yes, if you'll just do a dash and put holes in that amount so it's clear what part of the award amount we're ratifying here. Certainly. Thank you. That should help clear that up. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve award seven with amendment. Have we so moved? And a second. Second. We have a motion from Haibu, a second from Russell Caffey. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is adopted. I'll pass it over to Jenny to present our final award item for today. Thank you through the chair. Award number eight is an invitation for bid. Uh, this is sanitary sewer manhole structure rehabilitation and repair. This is for sealing, resealing, coating, repair, uh, rehabilitation, along with any related incidental work for sanitary sewer manholes. Um, we have three recommended awardees, uh, Engineered Spray Solutions LLC in the amount of $4 million. Concrete Conservation LLC in the amount of $3 million, and Vortex Services LLC in the amount of $3 million. This is a three-year award with two one-year optional renewals. Uh, we received, these three were the bids that we received. Um, the proposed solicitation um, is to contract for broader type services for the rehabilitation and the repair of the manholes beyond the manhole structural coding services that uh, we already have awarded to a different company. Our work part of this is e ESS. Um, JA reviewed all the bids, determined that the best mix of services were offered by kind of each of the suppliers in different ways. And so they are awarding this to the budget and spreading it out based off of what, where they believe kind of their niches are for work to be performed over the next three years. Any questions or comments? Just, this is another one that we need to adjust the award amount for this year. Yes, we will do that on, I think pretty much all of them. Hi, before we pass them to the chair to sign off on. Thank you. 
Any other questions, comments? We're all still recovering from the hurricane, so sorry we missed all those. <laughs> I understand. All right, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Jenny. May I get a motion to approve award eight with amendments to include the award amount for the uh, for this fiscal year? So moved. So moved. We have a motion from Russell Caffey in a second. Yeah, I'll take a second. Either one. All right. Uh, we have a motion from Russell Caffey, a second from Todd Skinner. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, All those opposed? Motion is adopted. The entire agenda representing items one through eight is approved for October 6, 2022. Is there any other business to come before the awards committee at this time? All right. Seeing none, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Sure.